Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I wanted to go through kind of how I care for plant seedlings. So mainly want to go through anthurium seedlings because I recently got one and I kind of wanted to share my experience and how I care for them. So I hope you guys find today's video helpful. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. And yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. So let me show you guys what seedling I bought and how it looks like. So I currently have this growing inside my little IKEA soccer greenhouse. And this is the little baby plant that I've purchased. It's so, so small. I honestly didn't think it was this small. The photo was a little bit deceiving, but that's okay. This is my beautiful Anthurium Magnificum. So this is most definitely a seedling. As you can see, it's literally the size of like, not even my palm, like the entire plant. So it has three little baby leaves. And I think this is honestly, a recent import it doesn't really have substantial root growth but the thing with seedlings is that it's very easy to acclimate them so they're a lot less prone to dying on you when you import seedlings versus big mature plants because when you import plants a lot of the times the roots do die off because they're in so much shock they're shipping from overseas they've been in the mail for days weeks whatever but if you were to just get a seedling they bounce back a lot quicker because the leaves are so small they don't need as much energy from the roots to kind of sustain itself so there's definitely pros to getting seedlings and it is quite like rewarding to actually watch it grow and develop because you know you grew it from a little baby and that's what a seedling is it's literally just a baby plant it can either be made from kind of like two anthuriums pollinating and creating a seedling or honestly i think that's the only way i think that's the only way for a seedling at least versus if you were just to propagate an anthurium i don't think you would call that a seedling that's just literally a propagation but this is most definitely a seedling and it's super super tiny you can tell this is a magnificum because it has kind of like the square petioles dropped a like a ball but the square petioles are a little less obvious when it's a seedling but i can tell there's like kind of some ridges so that it's not a round petiole so i'm pretty sure this is a magnificum it's so small i just can't get over it like so tiny. I don't know. But yeah, um, how I care for the seedling is I definitely make sure I keep it watered because the roots are so small that like it's harder for the water to be uptaken by the roots. And this was barely rooted. It probably has roots like this small, like two of them. So they're currently just rooting in Lekka. I find rooting in Lekka is a little bit easier versus just keeping it in water or rooting it in moss especially if I plan on keeping it in Lekka in the future. So, uh, let me see. Here's a nice looking root here. Yeah, yeah, there's a little root at the top. And that's definitely grown since being in my care. So it's rooting away in Lekka very happily. I do fill the water reservoir up to about a third of the way, which is around this line here. And the Lekka just wicks the water up from the water reservoir to the roots and you have to make sure that the roots don't stay past the one-third line especially when you're acclimating it and transitioning it to the leka. it was originally sold in soil which i honestly don't know why it was in soil because it wasn't ready in soil there were barely any roots so it had a little bit of soil roots but since transferring it to leka, i think it's much happier I like to keep my seedlings in very high humidity, which is why it's in my IKEA greenhouse, which let me see if I can pick this up for you. So yeah, this is the IKEA greenhouse. It's a little bit dirty right now, but I like to keep my anthuriums, my seedlings, and kind of anything that likes higher humidity. So I do crack it open a little bit. As you can see, it's cracked open at the top, just so there's a little bit of airflow. 
put this back down. So I do crack it open for the airflow. That way it's not kind of like very stale air in there. It's kind of too small for me to put a fan and a humidifier. So I kind of just spray it once or twice a day with a little spritzer bottle. I coat the sides with some water and that usually helps raise the humidity. And because the greenhouse is propped open, it does evaporate over time. So the humidity doesn't stay super, super high, but I mean, it's higher than my normal room humidity, which is about like 40, 50%, if that, uh, with my humidifier running 24 seven. So I guess this is my best kind of solution to low humidity. And I find seedlings definitely do thrive and grow a lot faster when there's higher humidity. Because they are tropical plants, they're very sensitive. You have to be on top of watering. You can't kind of let it dry out too quickly. And because they're in such small pots with small root systems, you do have to water it more often. So it's not like you can keep it in a giant pot and just have the water filled up all the way because you can rot the roots that way. So they are a little bit more sensitive, but like I said, they're a lot easier to acclimate when you bring them in from overseas or import them in. I also like to keep it in bright, bright light. So I literally have this right in front of a grow light so that it can really, really thrive. For seedlings, I want to make sure that, you know, it kind of grows up to its adult size. So light is very, very important. If you keep your seedlings kind of in a very dark spot, they're not going to grow fast. And it really helps with the acclimation process to have your seedlings kind of in a more brighter situation, higher humidity, and be very on top of your watering schedule. I do make sure I give nutrients to my seedlings so they're not in just plain water. I do have it in a nutrient solution for the water reservoir, which I'll go through that with a whole like very in-depth LECA tutorial on what I do with all my plants growing in LECA. So I don't want to really dive too deep into that, but it is in nutrients so I find Having nutrients really helps speeds up the kind of root growth as opposed to if you're just to place this in water and hope that the seedling thrives. High humidity, high light, uh, watering frequently, and nutrients. They're all very, very important. Last but not least, I find seedlings do thrive when it's a little bit warmer. So if you have a heat mat, that would be really good. I personally don't have a heat mat, but because this is sitting kind of right on top of a shelf where I have a grow light attached to that shelf, it warms up that shelf quite a bit. It's literally like a heat mat. So for some reason, it stays about 25 degrees on my plant shelf back there. Those grow lights do heat up a little bit. So 25 degrees, I think is pretty freaking good seeing that it's in the middle of winter and my plants close to my window are probably at like 18, 19 degrees. Obviously don't try to roast them and like keep this like near the stove, <laughs> but you know, a little bit warmer conditions really do help the seedlings grow a little bit faster. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. Comment down below if you have any seedlings that you're growing in your home right now and what type of seedling they are. I'm really looking for a forget eye seedling. So if you guys have any tips on where I can find that in the GTA area in Toronto, Canada, then please comment that down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.